Have you ever been reading the Bible and came across something and you said, oh, wait a minute, that was in there? I didn't know that was in there. Well, I think we have one of those situations that shows up in Mark chapter 4. And the situation here is Jesus had just finished giving the parable of the sower in the seed. Remember, the sower put a seed out in four different places. And in one place, it grew and it had fruit. And another place, it was stolen by the birds. Another place, it was choked out. You know, that kind of thing. And then Jesus pulls his disciples aside and he says the reason that i'm speaking to you in parables is because i don't want some people to know the truth so let's look at this it's in mark chapter 4 starting in verse 10 and it says but when he was alone those around him with the 12 asked him about the parable and he said to them to you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of god but to those who are outside all things come in parables so that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. You say, wait a minute here. Jesus didn't want these people to hear and understand. I mean, isn't this the Jesus who came so we could understand? Well, the first question we probably have here is, why would Jesus do this? Why would he hide the truth from some people? And I think the answer here, at least a possible answer, is that he did not want every single person who heard him and saw him to believe in him at that time because no one then would have been there to send him to the cross. And he would have had to go to the Father when he was done on this earth and say, I failed because everybody believed in me and I couldn't die to pay for their sins. So I think that's a possible answer. But something else we need to understand, I think here, is that there's nothing here that says they never would be able to understand. This possibly was a temporary thing temporarily blinding them so they could not understand at this point. It's very possible that many of these people did become believers after the resurrection when they saw the resurrected Jesus, or maybe even after Pentecost when many, many people became believers. So what I want to do now, because we're talking about this uh, idea of Calvinism, is I want to look at two things in this passage that I think undermine two of the major tenets of Calvinism. The first one undermines, I think, total depravity or total inability. And the second one, I think, undermines the idea of unconditional election. So the first one is that these people in this passage could have believed. Jesus said, I am hiding the truth from them so that seeing they will hear and, and not understand. So that, in other words, if he would have been clearer to them, there's a possibility that these people might have turned to him and he did not want them at this particular time. Instead, he spoke in parables. And after hearing the parables, the people would be like, what? Yeah, I, I, I don't get it. I don't understand. And he did that purposely so that at this time they would not receive. Now, if if a total depravity or total inability was true, where you cannot even accept Jesus until you are regenerated, then why would he have to speak in parables to them? It, it would be unnecessary then. So the first thing I want to point out is these people could have believed, which I think undermines the idea of total inability. And the second thing I want to point out is that God, I think, was respecting a decision that these people had already made. These people had already decided, apparently, that they're not going to believe in Jesus. They had general revelation around them. And here comes Jesus, the ultimate specific, ultimate special revelation. And they were watching him, and they still didn't believe. Now, the reason I think that is because in this passage, Jesus actually quotes from Isaiah. So let's look at this. It's in Isaiah chapter 6. And what's going on here is that Isaiah is getting this vision of the throne room of God. And God is going to ask for a volunteer. And in a way, Isaiah was kind of voluntold there because God's looking for a messenger to go out for him. And Isaiah is the only one standing there, right? So Isaiah chapter 6 and uh, verse 8. And I heard, also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, here am I, send me. And he said, go and tell this people, keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull and their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and return and be healed. So there it is again. God did not want some people to turn to him. What is going on? Why would he be like that, both in the book of Mark and there in Isaiah? And here it is. If you read these people to whom Isaiah was prophesying, these people who had repeatedly rejected God's advances. advances. These were the Israelites. God had come to them. God had chosen them. And they still rejected him over and over and over again. And what God tells Isaiah to do is, Isaiah, go and keep preaching to these people. 
Go out there and tell them this message. But in doing so, they will not listen to you. And the more you preach to them, the harder their heart is going to become and basically saying, okay, you chose the way that you're going to go. You're going to reject me. You keep going that way and see how much you like it. See if you like where it ends up. In, in a sense, he's saying you made your bed, now lying it. Now lie in it, right? That's the direction you want to go. You go ahead and you keep going that way then. See how it turns out for you. So God is telling through Isaiah, he's telling the Israelites, you just keep going in the path you're going to go. And Isaiah, as you keep preaching to them, their heart is going to keep getting harder. It's almost like, say, uh, you, you have this habit of drumming your fingers, right? You're drumming your fingers all the time on the table. And finally, somebody says, well, you just cut it out already. You're driving me crazy. And they keep telling you and they keep telling you. You keep tapping your fingers on the table. And pretty soon, you're not doing it because you want to. You're doing it because it irritates that person so badly, right? The more you get after me, the more you irritate me about what I'm irritating you about, the more I want to irritate you. So I'm going to keep drumming my fingers on the table. It's that kind of idea where God says, okay, Israelites, you want to do it and you keep doing it. I'm going to send Isaiah. And the more he preaches and the more he tells you not to do it, the more you're just going to want to do it. You just keep going in your own way. And then maybe at the end, you're going to see that you don't like where you end up. And then you come back to me. So when Jesus takes this idea, he pulls it here in the book of Mark and he says, look, that's the idea. These people have decided they're going to reject what they know about me. They're going to go their own way. And so I'm not going to give them any more truth right now. I'm just going to let them keep going their own way and work out my purpose of eventually it leading to my crucifixion. And again, he doesn't say that these people never would be able to respond for him. But at this time, they can't. So what's going on both in Isaiah and in Mark is God... And Jesus, they are, they are just telling the people, you have chosen your path, you keep going in that path. Let's say we uh, set up a, a, a meal for the homeless, and we rent out this building, and we put signs all over town on every telephone pole, and we pass out flyers, and we say, look, if you come on Friday night, we are going to give you a wonderful meal. You just show up, you don't have anywhere else to eat, come here and eat. And we wait and wait, and only a few people show up. Eventually, we're going to shut the doors and we're going to feed the people who come in. Before you know it, there's knocks on the doors, right? And there's people that are saying, hey, can we come in now? And we say, no, this time you did not take us up on, on what we invited you to do. This time is out. Come back next week. Maybe you'll have a chance to get in. But today it's too late. Uh, you're not going to be able to come in. We are rewarding them for their rejection of our invitation. And I think that's what God is doing both in Isaiah and in Mark. He is he is responding to what these people have done. They've rejected what they've known. So he says, you continue on in your rejection and see if you like where it ends up. So I hope that helps you. If you've ever struggled with this passage saying, why would Jesus not want any, everyone to come to him? I think that is at least a possible answer. Next time, we're going to continue on with more of our videos. And I don't know if we're going to continue right away with uh, why I'm not a Calvinist, but we're going to at least do hopefully many of these videos on different aspects of Calvinism, just trying to look at each specific passage that might be used in support of it and try to help us understand why I personally am not a Calvinist. So God bless you guys. I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining with me and have a great week.